let's go with our indian architecture sculpture and pottery i have covered the basic ncrts which you need not have to go and you know again re uh, restudy for your art and culture portion because my notes is enough which is covering all all the aspects of your ncrts i have referred to ccrt website so what exactly is architecture so you construct your house isn't it the architecture if you see different types of houses too in your locality or if you go to some other places and see the uh, see the designs of the houses you can see the difference in the designs see the south indian houses traditional houses see the north indian houses go to the northeast and you see a different type of designs of the houses so that is also architecture so the designing of a building the designing of a monument is simply called in layman terms the architecture the word architecture is derived from the latin word tecton sculpture because usually why i gave a definition of architecture and going to give you a definition of sculpture is because people usually tend to misunderstand the concepts of architecture and sculpture they think it is same but exactly it is not architecture means a monument or a building but sculpture is something figurine let's see what sculpture is see here see here is it as big as the architecture or the monument you saw if you see this is a image this is a figurine so what exactly is the sculpture the word sculpture is derived from proto indo european root kale it means to cut or cleave to cut or cleave if you see that image a rock has been taken it has been cleaved it has been cut into the image what we see here is the buddha so you are cutting and cleaving that stone to get a sculpture a image a figurine it refers to smaller three dimensional works of the art it's a three dimensional representation of an art if you see here okay in a painting you see a two dimensional art now of course you have 3d 4d 5d whatever but here i am talking about 3d dimensional in a painting you see a two dimension but in a sculpture you see a 3d dimension of the works of art it focuses more on imagination and aesthetics main thing is imagination we don't know how buddha looked we really don't know how krishna looked we don't know how yakshas were but it's simply an imagination here they have just carved it's an imagination of buddha here so it is simply an imagination and aesthetics aesthetics is the clothes we wear the earrings the jewelry or the makeup we wear all these are aesthetics so in the sculpture you use your creativity your imagination and the aesthetics for your use to build a 3d sculpture it is usually a single type of material but i would say there are various different sculptures where they have used to uh, uh, different materials in one sculpture too but usually they use one single material for here they have used one single rock to make this buddha and his followers image representation but some other ways some other parts of the country there are examples where we see multiple materials being used but architecture please remember 
for the buildings or the monuments you use actually different types of material a combination of materials are used in building architecture there is an exemption of many uh, architectural wonders in india if you see the kailashna temple in ellora or if you see the shravana belagula uh, sculpture in uh, shravana belagula karnataka there are some some monuments some sculptures some architectural wonders and marvels in india where it is constructed only by one material it's also amazing it's it depends on the builder or the engineer who is constructing it so i hope you have understood the difference between architecture and sculpture so let's move ahead let me see the classification of indian architecture so i'm not not just going through architecture in just a summary kind of but there are divisions because i told you to relate it to your indian history be it the ancient history be it the medieval or be it the modern indian history so the architecture of india has been classified into different time periods and under different styles so i have divided into three ancient india medieval india and modern india for your convenience so that you can relate your history and you can connect to the subject <laughs> so if you imagine ancient india what comes to your picture okay there was indus valley civilization after that came aryan civilization after that the ashokans came i mean the mauryans came the guptas came so all this comes to your mind the chain should go medieval period starts from the guptans you know many kingdoms in the south india the cholas the pandyas the hoysalas and vijayanagara and in the modern times of course the europeans dominated our indian subcontinent so here the three different periods are ancient india medieval india and modern india in the ancient india we are studying the harappan art why do we study the harappan art because we say the indian civilization it evolved through this harappan age one of the oldest civilization of the world a contemporary of the mesopotamian civilization a rich culture which we don't have even today we should know how the culture was there in harappa harappa is not just one place i think if you trace through your history remember your history back you will understand harappa was not just one city or a town but it was a flow of different cities in the north western part of india then comes the mauryan art you will see the changes happening from the indus valley civilization to the mauryan period what were the different structures and monuments they constructed during the mauryan period the lot of changes the polity changed the people people behavior changed and the buildings also changed the culture also changed so you see the difference between indus valley civilization or the harappan art to the mauryan art post mauryan period or the post mauryan art <laughs> you will see the shungas you will see many other kingdoms till the guptan age then you will see the guptan age art which is also called the golden period of indian history the revival of hinduism the building of temples started here and it also brought in many changes in the architectural designs of the country south indian art you know south indian art is quite different from the north indian art if you see the culture tradition 
language and monuments of the south india you will definitely agree with me that there are significant salient features of differences between the north and the south be it the food be it the language be it the culture everything you have a lot of difference so in the ancient india we cover the harappan art the mauryan art the post mauryan art guptan and the south indian art <laughs> then in the medieval india of course we have the advent of the islam coming to india with the delhi sultanate then the mughal art the mighty mughal emperors who have contributed a large to the architecture and sculpture of india <laughs> and to the modern india definitely the advent of europeans be it the britishers be it the uh, De from the denmark or the portuguese they have contributed to the growth of art and architecture of the country so you cannot neglect any of this so you are traversing from ancient india medieval india and also to the modern india in your art and culture like what happened <laughs> with the architecture what happened with the sculpture and what happened with the pottery and the other aspects so the first unit as i classified and defined we are seeing the ancient india in the ancient india as i told you and i briefed you we are dealing with harappan mauryan post mauryan guptan and south indian connect the dots like what you learned about harappan civilization because we are going to start with that what happened during them what you have learned about the uh, indus valley civilization so that you can connect here okay so let's see it see here i told you harappa is not just one city the civilization was completely from see north north west of india from afghanistan you can see here the jammu kashmir region entire of north india the north western region pakistan and today's iran was also covered here and south till maharashtra it was covered in the indus valley civilization so it was not just one city or town or a couple of towns it spread from the afghanistan hills in the north india the north western india covered pakistan came till iran today's iran and gujarat and came till the south maharashtra so this is the indus valley civilization you should know where exactly was the civilization please have a look at the map here please have a look at the map so that you will understand the location of this indus valley civilization so see if you recollect your geography lessons a major river flows through this north western part of our indian subcontinent and which is that it is indus river it has many tributaries but it is one major river so the along this indus river there were this flourishing towns which contributed to this indus valley civilization so it originated on the banks of river indus and its tributaries indus means a system of rivers and along that river and its tributaries you find the places of this indus valley civilization and see the origins are traced back to the second half of the third millennium bce first thing you should know the location second thing you should know the time period of this civilization it is third millennium bce please don't get confused with the location if they ask you because there are many questions which has been asked about the indus valley civilization so if they say the indus valley civilization extended through karnataka and tamil nadu in south india it is very wrong 
because I told you the location extended only till Maharashtra, the north of Maharashtra, mainly till the Vidarbha region. It did not extend beyond that. So please remember the location very much and also the timeline. Here I am saying the second half of the third millennium BCE. It's very, very important. It is mostly found in the northwestern and western India. I told you already the northwestern and the western part of India. <laughs> see the map again because you see the entire north, northwest and the western part of India. Harappa and Mohanjadaro are the finest and earliest examples of urban civic planning. Even today, even today, the best and best of the cities and towns of the world do not have the features of urban civic planning as it was seen in Harappa and Mohanjadaro. They are the best examples of town planning. How a town can be planned? We should learn about it from Harappa and Mohanjadaro. They are one of the finest examples we trace in history. None of the civilization which were in parallel with Indus, civili Indus Valley civilization had such example of urban civic planning. Even today, in the news, if you have seen the editorials or any, any references uh, in the news channel debates and all, there comes this Mo Harappa and Mohanjadaro example for urban civic planning. Why? Because you see every monsoon our cities are getting flooded. Why is it getting flooded? Because you are encroaching the lands, right? So, then how did centuries back we had this Harappa and Mohenjodaro which survived such disasters of Indus? So, that's why in the paper, in the opinion, in the editorials and the, uh, you know, uh, most renowned engineers and all, they studied the urban civic planning of more Harappa and Mohenjodaro to inculcate in our present times to handle the disasters to handle the city planning such was the mastery level so here to summarize the Harappan civilization or the Harappan heart it was found majorly in the northwestern and the western part of India along the banks of river Indus and its tributaries you also have the date backing in the second half of the third millennium of BC. I told you you should remember the location and also I have given you two examples of excellent urban civic planning in the world which is immatchable till date that is Harappa and Mohanjadaro. Now where is Harappa? <laughs> I told you the location of course in the northwestern and the western part of India. Now why, why the name Harappa? Where is this town? Harappa. It is in Pakistan of today on the banks of river Ravi. So now you might ask me the question ma'am you told me that uh, it was along the, along the banks of river Indus. Now why this Ravi came? So Ravi is a tributary of river Indus. So, it is this Harappa, Harappa city or town, it is on the bank of river Ravi which is a tributary of Indus. Mother goddess, where, what do you find in Harappa? See, not just knowing the location or on which river bank it, it is located is important, but you should know what exactly are the things we find or we got to find in this city or town. Why am I stressing on what, what do we find or what have we found in this region is because UPSC has been constantly asking questions about these cities and towns and what are the significant things we get from this places. First thing mother goddesses figure. We have found some mother goddesses figure which is like Shakti means you can say like there was worshipping of women feminine feminine cult like Shakti cult means not exactly the Shakti cult but they 
started worshipping women. Women means women were given higher status. So, I am trying to help you relate what the sculpture means and how it adds on to the culture. Please remember there was no concept of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, whatever in your Indus Valley civilization. So, when we see Harappa, you find a mother goddess's figure which simply says women were given higher status in the society and women were worshipped. Means they were worshipped, worshipping some kind of women goddesses. You find a sculpture of a dog chasing a deer in bronze metal. Bronze metal was used. They knew the art of making bronze metal. Understood? So, a dog is chasing a deer. What does it implicate? There were dogs found in the Harappan town. There were deers. Means they were taming dogs. The dogs were hunting deers. You can see the fauna flora from this sculptures and art. Mirror, copper scale etc. have also been found in this region. Copper scale means the weights and measurements you use for trade, no? Like give me, uh, if they say, if they, if you go to a grocery shop and ask them, give me 1 kg of rice, they will obviously put bars of 1 kg and they will, uh, they will measure and they will give you, right? The same way, the copper scale was used for measurements of weights. So, that was found in Harappa, means trade was clearly evident during the times of Harappa. So, what do we learn about Harappa here? It was located on the banks of river Ravi in Pakistan. Mother goddess's figure was found. It simply says women were given higher status in the society and women were celebrated and worshipped in the society. A sculpture of dog chasing a deer in bronze metal means bronze metal, uh, making of bronze metal was known to this people. There was a mirror, there was a copper scale, means trade was flourishing in this region. So, this is about Harappa. Okay. Next, let us go to Mohenjo-daro. So, what do we found in Mohenjo-daro? It is also in Pakistan. Actually, <coughs> Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Bhutan, all this were considered as Indian subcontinent in the ancient times. So, it is now in Pakistan, but it is a part of Indian culture. So, where is Mohenjo-daro? It is in Pakistan on the banks of river Indus. You find a great bath. See here. This is the great bath. Look at how the flooring has been done. Baked bricks were used. Look at how, how they have done. See here. In the corners, you can find the changing rooms or some rooms, you know, for the benefit of the public. Because this great bath was used for ceremonial purposes. You can see the flight of steps on two sides so that people can just go in and they can take the bath and come back. See the level. It is quite on a upper platform. And see the drain. It, 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 it will not clot here if you are using this bricks. So, just see the image or the architecture of this great bath here. They have completely used burnt bricks here. Okay. So, this is found in Mohenjo-daro. Mohenjo-daro is in Pakistan on the bank of river Indus. I told you about great bath. I told you that already in Harappa we found the bronze metal statue. So, they knew the art of making bronze means metallurgy was very familiar to them. It was not new to them. They knew the art of making metals. 
the bronze statue of the dancing girl. See here, there is a dancing girl. If you see this dancing girl, she is wearing an armlet. She is wearing jewelry. Look at her hairdo. Look at her full ha one, one of uh, the left hand pura. She is wearing bangles. Here also she is wearing in the right hand jewels. So don't you think so? They were using jewelry at that time, makeup because the hair has been done, right? So it simply shows that dance was in practice, jewelry were used, hairdo was also in practice in the Indus Valley civilization. The great granary. Why do we use granary to store grains of course? So you can infer that agriculture was flourishing for themselves and you know about the copper scales then obviously they will be using this agricultural produce for trade too. So there was granary. Citadel. Citadel is upper platform. I told you this great bath is found in the citadel. There was dif dis difference between uh, uh, the towns in the, uh, the upper town and the lower town. The upper town was situated on the citadel, means a bit higher on the platform from the lower town. To distinguish, maybe it may be, uh, uh, we are not clear about it, we still are ambiguous about it. We say citadel and lower platform, uh, lower town was due uh, to recognize the difference of status of living between the rich and the poor, but we don't, we can't say we don't have much evidence about it. But citadel is the higher platform on which we found this great path. A sculpture of a bearded priest. Look at here, a bearded priest sculpture is there where he is wearing a shawl and his shawl has flower motifs. Look at his beard, look at his headgear. So it simply means what kind of clothes they were wearing. They used to embroider those clothes. They used to use the headgear. They used to have designed beard. These beard you are using, you are, it is in trend now. So you can imagine at that time they had this trend. Okay? The sculptures, the architecture simply says how the life was. If you say the citadel and the great bath, there might be priests who are, why do we go to the great bath? To take baths, right? For ceremonial purposes, means they used to have some culture, some kind of ceremonies they used to practice. So the priest might be there, rich people might be there, <coughs> there may be societal differences also. So we learnt the things, uh, important art and culture things we found in Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Okay, after seeing the Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, let's see the next one, next city known as Mehergad. Mehergad is also in Pakistan and it is on the banks of river Indus. It, the things which, has fa which are found in Mehergad are Pakistan copper tools and pottery, like copper tools and pottery are found in Mehergad. Harappa, Mohenjo-daro and now Mehergad is all three are in Pakistan and mainly on river Indus and its tributaries. We have found copper tools and pottery here. So this is the site map of site picture of Mehergad. So if you see here copper tools are used here and pottery is also seen in Mehergad. <laughs> The next one, Dolavira. See, Dolavira is always in news recently because of the museum they are constructing in Lothal and because of Gujarat elections. So, Dolavira is in Gujarat in India. So, what have we found in Dolavira? A unique water harnessing system. If you see happen to travel through Rajasthan and Gujarat, you find the step wells. Why? 
because for water harnessing and conservation because these are dry and arid areas dams and embankments jained water reservoir etc because i told you it is dry and arid region and they had to conserve the water for the drier days so in dolavira which is in gujarat of india you are you are finding the unique water harnessing system dams embankments jained water reservoir etc please relate to the current affairs news because of gujarat elections there is there is a new indus valley museum coming up in luthal so this is a kind of water harnessing system which is found in dolavira of gujarat next is rakhi ghadi it is in haryana rakhi ghadi this is the site of haryana they are doing a lot of excavations in rakhi ghadi it is in haryana you have again found granaries why granaries i told you already agriculture was in practice they used to produce substantial amount it is required for themselves as well as for trade you have found drains to conserve water to supply water terracotta bricks terracotta bricks are nothing but burnt red bricks which is almost used in the entire location of your indus valley civilization so if you see if you see almost all the parts have similar findings right you can relate to it so this is rakhi gadi one of the it is the largest it is the largest indus valley site which has been found in the entire indus valley civilization please remember this name rakhi ghadi then ropar now ropar it is now a big town in punjab it is situated on the banks of a river satluj here you have found copper axe so if you see the towns and cities i mentioned throughout they have used copper bronze so look at the metallurgy copper is used bronze is used they knew metallurgy they are using axe here axe why because they were doing agriculture and also hunting was in practice so axe was there a dog was buried with human oval pit burial see look at here in ropa you find the belief in life after death <coughs> a burial system where dog was also buried with human look at the belief so if they ask were burial pits found in indus valley civilization definitely you should mark yes in the multiple option question multiple statement questions they might ask you to infer if in one statement regarding indus valley settlement they ask you there are evidence of burial pits in indus valley civilization what would be your answer yes so it is found in ropar so this is some settlements which have this is not exactly what uh, you know just a resemblance we have given the picture but it is on river satluj next balathal and kalibangan look at look at the town here look at the settlement here again they have used the burnt bricks look at the difference here they have some granaries they have some you know drainage system here along right you can find how they have constructed so this balathal and kalibangan it is mainly in rajasthan again a arid region dry region they had some you know water reservoirs constructed in the houses and in the towns they had bones of camel of course camel camel which is even evident now was found even during the indus valley civilization period toy factory was found uh, there were evidences of bangle factory in kalibangan in kalibangan there was huge trade a factory of, of bangles found decorated bricks were founded there and bangle factory so please remember this balathal and kalibangan 
which is in Rajasthan mainly known for bangle factory. Since it is in dry and arid region they had reservoirs and they were concentrating on water conservation also. Next is Surka Toda. This Surka Toda was asked in one of your UPSC examination. Why is the Surko Tada very very important from your examination point of view? Because you have found the first actual remains of horse bone. We have got the first actual remains of horse bone from this Surka Tada and it is in Gujarat. So many of the sites are in Gujarat and Rajasthan because the civilization expanded from northwest and the western part of India. So here we found the first actual remains of horse bone. Dog we found, sheep we found, camel we found, now horse we have found. We have found the you know burial pits, we have found grain, granaries, bangle factory, toy factory, brick making metallurgy look at it right and see here see here the picture of the place next is banavali there is a there is a well you have found well in banavali okay so it is in haryana on the banks of river saraswati which is dried up now you have to relate it to current affairs there has been project which is interest of which is an interest of center and they want to uh, you know revive this Saraswati dried up river. So this Banavali is on the banks of river Saraswati which is dried up. You have found lapis lazuli, barley grains etc. I told you agriculture was in practice. So you found barley grains in this region. You have also found lapis lazuli which is a blue color stone, a blue color not diamond, it is a precious st stone lapis lazuli which they used to have in jewelries. So you have found lapis lazuli which is a precious stone and also barley grains which simply says agriculture was in practice, trade was in practice of agriculture in Banavali or Indus Valley civilization. It is only city with radial streets. Now what is radial streets? These are radial streets. Means there will be a circle in the center of the town and from there, there will be different radial directions of streets. So it is only city in the Indus Valley civilization where you have found this radial streets. Other, other, other cities you have found only right angular or perpendicular streets. Only here in Banavali you found this radial streets. Okay. Next Alam Girpur. It is in Uttar Pradesh and it is on the banks of river Yamuna. If you happen to see the rivers on uh, uh, the rivers and the cities of this Indus Valley civilization, you will definitely say all these towns existed or it was located on river banks. Why? Because river banks were, were the epicenter of civilization to emerge. It is in Uttar Pradesh and on the banks of Yamuna. If you see uh, the Aryan civilization, Mesopotamian or the Chinese civilization or Indus Valley civilization, definitely you will find most of them located on the banks of big, big rivers or small rivers. There are found impressions of a cloth on a trough ceramic items and it is the easternmost site of IVC. I told you the location is spread from the north, northwest and the western parts of the country till Maharashtra region. This Alamgirpur is one of the, uh, is the easternmost site of Indus Valley civilization. You have found the traces of cloth they have used. Of course, when we see the sculptures of bearded priest and all, you might say like they have used good fabric, be it cotton or wool. And they have also found ceramic 
items. Okay. Now coming to Harappan architecture. Till now we found what were the art and sculptures or things we have found in this Indus Valley civilization. Now let us see how was the architecture. How was the architecture in the Harappan civilization? The towns were in rectangular grid pattern. In rectangular grid pattern means it was in the form of rectangular grid and in that they used to design or plan the town. Where is the citadel? Where is the lower town? How the grids have to be connected? How the lanes have to be connected? How the streets have to be arranged? Will be decided after this rectangular grid pattern of the town. The roads ran in north, south and east, west direction cut each other at right angles. So, the town had north to south, east to west, okay, and they used to cut at a right angle directions, perpendicular they were. See, north, south and east, west direction cut each other at right angles. But there was one town, please remember which town I told you, it had a radial design of streets in the town. Three types of buildings were constructed. Dwelling houses for the people, public buildings and public baths. Public buildings and public baths were found in the citadel region. Mainly the lower towns were consisting of the dwelling houses. So see here, see here, see most of them are bricks, right? Most of them are bricks. See this part is citadel, this is the lower town. Here the dwellings will be found. That is common people like me and you will be living with our houses in the lower town and in the upper you have the public buildings like you know courts, complexes, temples etc. And also public baths were found on the citadel. The use of burnt mud bricks of standardized dimensions. I told you architecture was everything about engineering and me measurements. So, if you see here entirely, there has been burnt mud bricks. The burnt mud bricks were of standardized dimensions. Are you getting my point? So, all the bricks had the di standard dimension measurements. They did not have random measurements. So, these were the Harappan architecture. Mainly, the towns were constructed on rectangular grid pattern. In that they used to divide the town into citadel and lower town. The citadel mainly had the public buildings, public baths and the lower town had public dwellings. People used to dwell there. Okay. And the city was divided into two parts. I told you, I already defined you like the upper part was citadel and the lower part was in the other side. An upright citadel in the western part was used for constructing larger buildings like granaries, I told you public buildings, like temples, like courts, complexes or you know uh, granaries, uh, great baths and public baths, they were in the citadel region and the lower town was mainly for the working class. Which simply says, there was an administration which was determining where the buildings were supposed to be constructed, how the city should be maintained, right? And also there was hierarchy of class in the society. So, please understand this is not just architecture, you will also infer how the society was, right? So, the city was divided into two parts as I told you, the upper citadel mainly for the public purposes and the lower towns for the working class. When I was telling you, defining about Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, I told you they had the brilliant civic planning system. So, here they had advanced drainage system. The drains were covered loosely and had cesspits means 
the drains were covered above and each house drainage was connected to the main drain. So, if there was any clog or any blockage happening, there were cesspits in between where they used to go and repair it. Right? So, it was very very advanced drainage system. You had cesspits also for monitoring. So, please remember this. Then you have the seals. So, now you found the architecture of Harappa. I told you we have we have found different sculpt, different images, different sculptures in different different cities of Harappa, where you have found that agriculture was in practice, trade was in practice, the Shakti cult or the uh, you know uh, prayers or worshiping of mother goddesses was there. There was a bearded priest, there was a dancing girl, right? There were animals dog, deer, camel, horse, what not, right? And there were precious stones, lapis, lazuli, toy factory was there, bangle factory was there. And there was, coming to architecture, there was red burnt bricks which was used in standardized measurements all over the cities. The new metallurgy, they knew how to wear different types of clothes, embroideries, potteries also. Advanced drainage system, advanced civic planning system, which is you know even competent even for today. So, let us go to the sculptures where we find the seals. Look at the picture here. If you see the seals also, you will understand what were the fauna and flora there. Right? Look at the animals, unicorn, rhinoceros. And you have the Pashupati Shiva. There was Shakti cult. There was also Pashupati Shiva cult. So, mostly square but triangular, rectangular and circular seals were found. Square, rectangular and triangular seals were found in or circular seals were found in this Harappan civilization. Now, why they used to have these seals? Because they used to have trade. From one place to another, if they are traveling and they want to show and trade with other cities, they used to show the seals and say like we are from this place and this is the seal, this is the sign or the official, uh, you know, now you give the cards, you know, official card, the same official card was the seal here, okay, rectangular shape, triangular shape, square shape and also circular shape. Steatite was commonly used but copper, fans, agate, terracotta seals have also been found in the cities. Okay? So, please understand this metal which was used for making seals. Steatite, copper, fianze, agate, terracotta seals were also found. Inscriptions means in the seals, in the seals you find many inscriptions. I already told you there was rhinoceros, there was unicorn, there was Pashupati Shiva. These inscriptions in the pictographic script animals impressions were also present. Till date we have not deciphered the language or the script of Indus Valley civilization. It is in pictographic representations we are not able to you know decipher this language. Common animal motifs are found in the sculptures and the seals that is tiger, unicorn, humped bull, rhinoceros, elephant, buffalo, bison, ibex, crocodile, dog, deer, horse, camel etc. have also been found. There was no evidence of cow which is found till now if and seals were extensively used for trade. I told you there was trade, there was scales also copper scales which was used so when uh, there were no evidence of cow please remember cows were abundant during the aryan civilization not during the indus valley civilization please remember this because in the multiple statement questions they might say you that cow was found in indus valley civilization please mark no got it 
so elephants unicorn and many other uh, fauna were found in the seals bronze figurines were there they were made using lost wax technique i have given you picture of this lost wax technique how they used to make they used to make a dummy and they used to you know insert the metal the metal in in a fluid form and they used to mold it into the figurine or the sculpture they wanted to make the lost wax technique was used in making the sculptures of indus valley civilization please remember next terracotta fire baked clay was also used look at here they used to pinch and do like if you are doing mother canal you are going to take a dough and you will pinch and do it right look at here how they are pinching the same way they used to make this terracotta fire baked clay in pinching method like you are molding a dough it was mostly found in gujarat kalibangan mainly because they had toy factory bangle factory they were used to make animal figures miniature carts toys wheels because in kalibangan you have found this bangle factory and toy factory so they were making use of this terracotta fired baked clay in pinching method pottery was also found i told you many of the towns in kalibangan banwali and all you have found pottery ceramics are also found in alamgarh so plain pottery was there and painted pottery was there red and black pottery was also found here they were used to make household decorative straining liquor perforated potteries so why pottery was used trade purpose and also for household purposes to store the grains for drinking purpose for cooking purpose and many other things and they were in different see here black black painted and the red bricks red terracotta look at the designs they have painted mostly geometric illusions they have made so plain pottery was there and also painted pottery black pottery was found and also red pottery was found in indus valley civilization throughout and they used to represent it with animal figures and floral designs and also with you know geometric patterns i told you ornaments when i showed you the bearded priest and uh, when i showed you uh, the dancing girl i told you they were using ornaments they were made of gem stones like lapis lazuli precious metals baked clay like terracotta bones both men and women used to have uh, used to wear this ornaments like we saw with the bearded priest they produced in large scale factories in chanudaro and lothal so toy factory and bangle factory was found in rajasthan area but in chanudaro and lothal in gujarat you find this ornament industry look at the ornaments here you can you can see some bones some uh, some other precious precious metals also being used to make it so both men and women use this jewelry so fabric what was the fabric when we see the bearded priest he was wearing a shawl no so wool and cotton was used means ship was reared for wool there was cotton textiles also we possibly had jute or m fibers were also used to make the fabric of people so people were fond of different different fabrics in the civilization okay so till now we learned the art and architecture or the life of indus valley civilization we found different cities wherein we found different metal different elements which was found in these cities which we infer the lifestyle and culture we saw the architecture of the towns which was designed in a rectangular grid there was different status of the society the citadel and the lower town the types of buildings we had the types of celebrations they used to have and the uh, jewelry ornaments and flora flora fauna and the practices they used to have so 
I have completed the Harappan art now in the first first unit. Next, we will go to the Mauryan art in the next class. Thank you so much and take care.